Hi, how are you? Hope everybody's doing well. Let's talk about scripture. The scripture readings are taken from Acts of the Apostles, from the first letter of John, and from the Gospel of John. And in them, John is telling us, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. There's nothing wrong with saying, I love you. But there's nothing more hurtful than to say, I love you without meaning it. False love hurts. People who pretend to love because they want to manipulate a person or a situation really hurt others. What they don't know is that they hurt themselves too. Because pretending to love or not really loving doesn't give us good fruits doesn't give us a clear conscience. That's why John is, John is emphasizing in his letter that we should be consistent, that what we say should be the same that we have in our heart. That if we say that we love, then it is because we really, truly love, and not because we feel obligated or that we are used to, or that we believe that we have an alternative benefit just to say that. On the other hand, there's people who truly love, but that we have certain doubts about their love. <laughs> Sometimes some people have a difficult time convincing others that they truly love them, and they truly love them. Love is a fire that ignites in, in the interior of the person and it changed them, transformed them. But that change that happens in the interior of the person, sometimes it's difficult to see in the exterior and it's hard to believe sometimes. Only through time, through our actions and our choices, little by little, others will be able to start to see it, start to believe it that we change and they become witness of that change. Paul faced that situation after taking upon himself to persecute Christians. Of course the disciples feared him. I would fear him too. It was difficult for the disciples to believe that he had become one of them. The disciples knew deceitful people treason, falsehood, and they doubted Paul's true intentions. But the disciples have something on their arsenal that was very powerful that would guide them for the rest of their journey. The disciples knew true love because Jesus himself truly loved them and showed them the true love of the Father. And they live in the true love of the Spirit. And over time, they were able to realize and confirm that Paul was saying the truth. Not because he said it, but because he showed them with his actions, with his life choices, that he truly loved the Lord, that he knew the love of Jesus. He was changed. Every time love touched one of us, it transformed us, it convert us. That's the power of God. Love is the truth of God in action. Living in that truth, is a recipe, a really good recipe for keeping a clear conscience. One who is honest and authentic, relate to others from that same authenticity and honesty. And therefore, it doesn't have superficial relationships, but deep, true relationships with others grounded in the truth of who Christ is. 
is there are no shortcuts. If we want to love, if we want to truly love, it has to be true. We need to do the field work. It means having the deep conversations that we've been postponing. Is sharing the concerns that we have in our heart. Is showing the others that we worry about them if we do instead of finding ways to manipulate them and manipulate situations. We need to give them the opportunity to change for love, out of love. And in the same process, we open ourselves to change too. Love does that. Keeping in mind that our love for others fails too. That our true love, even if we desire, needs work, a lot of work, through our whole lives constantly. If we can truly love each other, it's because God truly loved us, because Jesus truly loved us that he showed us a love so great that he laid his life for us on the cross, that he became that shepherd willing to die for his sheep. This is the kind of love that Paul learned and he lived by that love and began to speak without hiding with authenticity, with honesty, with truth. And that's the way that he spoke in public to those who spoke Greek. But we know that love is always a challenge because it's a call to change. Always, love is a call to change. And many people resist change. That's why many tried to kill Paul. But Paul was willing to die because he knew true love was worth it. The community of Paul loved him and wanted to protect him. That's why when his life was in danger, they sent him to Tarsus. We don't know if Paul liked it or he resisted, but what we know is that Paul was humble enough to accept it, to recognize that love in his community and to obey. Jesus in the gospel tell us that he is that love, that feed us, that give us life. That's why he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. That's the effect of love. When two people love each other, they produce life. That's the natural effect of it. But if we don't, we are thrown out like a dry branch and we wither. If we remain in that love, we are filled with life. That's why John tell us we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. The true love holds us together with the true love, Jesus. We get fed of that true love. Without it, we just dry it out. How many people do we know that need true love in their lives? They're a bit dry. John tells us, those who keep his commandments remain in him 
and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. Love improves everything. Our family relationships, our friend relationships, our co-workers, our communities. But love that is based in truth, in authenticity. I always like the phrase, it's in Spanish. I'm going to translate it. The one who hides nothing, fears nothing, and sleeps peacefully. The one who hides nothing, fears nothing, and sleeps peacefully. It tells us that the foundation of living in peace and with a clear conscience is to live with transparency, with authenticity, with honesty in our lives. And from there, we can truly love as Jesus did. May God bless you all and let us be saints.